Let us worship God. Please rise as you're able and join me in the call to worship. I waited patiently for the Lord. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry bog. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Let us worship God. Please bow your heads for the opening prayer. O oh, Redeemer God, as we gather and worship on this Sunday, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us. We pray for your Spirit to awaken new hope in us. Grant us the vision to see the coming of your kingdom. Help us to celebrate the glimpses of grace that you have given to each of us. Knit our hearts together in worship and communion so that we know we do not struggle alone in our faith. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me in, Lord, I lift your name on high. Praise God. <laughs>
first verse of Jesus Loves me in preparation for the children's message. Dedicate not only our offerings, 
but ourselves to God. Amen. Diagnosed with cancer, so prayer for her. Others. Alice. 
A friend of mine back in New York has a grandchild. He's not quite two, but he has seizures. They never know when they're coming on. And they don't know how long he's going to last. He's not even two. So his name is Leo. Leo. Okay. So prayers for Leo, grandchild of a friend back of Alice's back in New York. Uh, he was diagnosed with uh, seizures and has had those repeatedly. Apparently, he's two years old. So, uh, you yeah, know, prayers, prayers for Leo and for his family. Other others. Joe. Pray that we had a really good weekend. My son came in to visit uh, all the boys are home uh, and uh, having a good time together. And my family came to visit also the brother and sister. We had a good quality time and they are leaving tomorrow. So, and then prayers to visit, safe return back to their house. Okay, so the praises for family and uh, kids being here for, for a while and, uh, and prayers for safe journeys back. Yes. Yes, Mary. Uh, prayers for my brother-in-law, Herman. He's having open heart surgery Tuesday. And prayers for my sister, Esther. She's having a lot of complications. She got over COVID, but she's having a lot of complications from it. Mm -hmm. And they can't seem to get it, you know. Her breathing and sleeping, she, they just can't seem to find it. So prayers for her. Okay. So uh, prayers for, um, okay, if I can get all this right. Her. Her, Herman. Um, and is it Esther? Yeah. Yeah, for the, their different uh, concerns that they have. Esther has uh, had COVID and is having some uh, major issues with breathing, et cetera, from that. So. Okay. Yeah, others. Yes, a friend named Gail Johnson from Jackson. Uh, she had COVID about two months ago. Uh, she was in the hospital nine days. She had a pretty bad, but they found a mass in her lung. And so either this week or next week, she'll find out if it's cancerous or not. So prayers for her. For, was it Gail? Gail John Jackson. Gail, Gail Jackson. Okay. Uh, prayers for Gail, who has uh, been, well, had COVID, has a, Mass in her uh, in her lung. In her lung. So um, we'll be soon finding out if it's cancerous or not. So prayers, prayers for her. <clears throat> Others? Yes, Carol. We had a young black man come in and he sat down. He sat through our <laughs> Bible, Bible class and he came in and he didn't stay long here. But I think he needs a lot of help. Hmm. Yes. And guidance. You were singing with the, the choir too, so yeah, uh, well, he, he left or he's going to come back or what? I don't know. So yeah, prayers for him. He, he did say that he told me that he had to go tell his sister where he was at, so he oh. might be back. I'm not sure. Okay. Oh. Hey, oh. prayers for my mother as she deals with being 97 oh. years old and all those. Oh. Daily, and you know, she's 97, and we just deal with everything as it comes and goes. So, yeah. <laughs> prayers for mom. Yeah, yeah. Continue prayers for God. Uh, turned 97, and uh, she's been, 97. been 97 for a little while. <laughs> Barbara had a birthday this last week. I'm not going to say how old she was, but uh, nevertheless, uh, continue prayers for God. Yeah. It's always great to have her here, but what a it's so wonderful to look over there on the your right side of the sanctuary and see uh, God and Mark. Any others? Okay. Yes, Craig. Right. Um, today is the day that they're finally putting John to a final resting place. Okay. So, so uh, prayers for my mother. Yeah, prayers for uh, Craig's uh, mother as uh, his stepfather will be laid to rest today. So uh, it's a very emotional and uh, challenging day, so prayers for the entire self family. Are there others? Okay, well, let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together as your people in prayer. We pray, Lord, for all those that were mentioned today, whether they be praises or whether they be a prayer concern for ourselves, a loved one, a friend, a, a, a co worker's family. Whoever it may be, we Lord, know, Lord, that you are the great physician and you touch our lives in so many different ways. We just 
pray, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to, to help those that need help, whatever the situation is. Because, Lord, you, you know them so much better than we do. But uh, our hearts go out to all those with uh, physical ailments, those with emotional concerns, those with spiritual concerns. And Lord, we know that you can touch each and every one of those and, and heal them and bring them back to wholeness. We pray, Lord, that they, you bring them to you. Lord, we pray for our church, those that can't make it today, whether they're traveling or, or not feeling well at home, whether they're in the, in the hospital or wherever they may be, we ask your Lord to be with them, to, to send your spirit to them and to to bring them back to us very soon. We pray, Lord, for guidance for our session, for the church, as uh, changes will be occurring over the next few months, and just for direction. We pray, Lord, for each one of us, for guiding us in, in our lives, because uh, we can't do it on our own, Lord. We can only do it by, with your guidance, with your direction. Lord, in the with so much chaos in our country and world, we can just, our minds can just be bogged down with the concerns. We pray, Lord, for guidance for all the leaders, whether it be our own country or, again, those in the world. And we just uh, ask for direction for them. May they seek it from you, not doing things on their own that benefits them, whether it be financially or politically or anything else, Lord, that we ask you to put it on their hearts to do what is right for your people. Lord, we pray for all those that are persecuted throughout our world because of their faith. It burdens our heart knowing that people, as we speak, are unable because of restrictive governments. To, to meet openly, but they have to meet in hiding. And, but their faith is so strong because they know that their Lord and Savior is with them. Be with them, Lord. And uh, we pray, Lord, for all those restrictive governments that uh, they will let people meet together as people of faith, faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for ourselves. Many times we fail you and fail others. We sin against others in thought, in word, and in deed, in many different ways. We, uh, we grieve our own sin, and but yet we know, Lord, that when we come to you that we will be forgiven. We will brought back, be brought back to wholeness, to righteousness to a right relationship with you. And therefore, through your working in us, a right relationship with others. Lord, as we come to this time of confession, we ask you, Lord, to hear each of us as we lift up our prayers of confession to you. For we know that you are always available and always willing to hear us. Let us have just a moment of silent prayers of confession. We thank you, Lord, for hearing us, for making us whole, for going to the cross for us, rising from the dead for us, so our lives can be full, be filled with the Holy Spirit, be, be full and to share that wonderful good news. And now as we continue in our prayers, I ask you to all to join me as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples on the Sermon on the Mount. As we all pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I now ask the choir to come up, and uh, they will be leading us with, uh, in, as we continue to worship, as they sing one of my favorite songs uh, recorded by Philip Spring in the Revelation song.
Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. And thank you, choir. Yeah. The Old Testament lesson today is the Psalms. Psalms 91, 1 through 16. Follow behind me on the board. You will live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. No scourge come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will, you will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will, will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Thank you, Craig. The gospel lesson for this morning is from Matthew's Gospel, the fourth chapter, verses 18 through 25. This is right after Jesus' baptism and his temptations in the, in the wilderness. And here he begins his ministry. This passage is also just prior to the Sermon on the Mount. So from Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 25. As he, Jesus, walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their, the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all the sick, those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, and paralytics, and he cured them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the words of our Lord endure forever. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus' life. We ask you, Lord, to guide us as we hear the message this morning. If there's anything, Lord, that hinders us, we ask you, Lord, to take it. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. I ask you to look at the screens. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations. 
to boldly go where no man has gone before. for all you Trekkies out there. Uh, of course, this was the opening narration by Captain Kirk for every episode of the original Star Trek. From a Newsweek article from 1998, we have the following. Remarking on the breathtaking wonders of the universe being revealed by the Hubble Space Telescope, wonders many people, including some scientists, say can only be attributed to a creator god. George Will observed, soon the American Civil Liberties Union, or People for the American Way, or some fashion of litigious secularism will file suit against NASA, charging that the Hubble Space Telescope unconstitutionally gives comfort to the religiously inclined. <laughs> Space. When we think of the word space, we might think of space station, outer space, parking space, personal space, space needle, space ship, or any other space, real or imaginary. Spaces can be big or small, important or of little significance. Comfortable or constrictive, personal or communal in nature. They come in all shapes and sizes. We can think of people that have contributed to our world and our minds can really start racing. We celebrate people from all walks of life. Yet all of their contributions are really inconsequential compared to the life contained in what I call the space. The Apostles' Creed, which we say after the Lord's Supper most every time we celebrate the sacrament, there are 109 spaces. The spaces divide the letters into words and the words into sentences. Every single one has its importance. They are all the same size. When typing them, you need to press the space bar, one time for each space. But I think there is one space, and again I call it the space, that is the most important space of all. It's a space after the comma, after Gordon of the Virgin Mary, and the words suffered under Pontius Pilate. Within this space, we have the entire earthly life not counting the final few hours of one man. It's a small space in the paragraph, but huge in scope of what it covers, and huge in the life of everyone who calls himself a Christian, and huge in the entire history of humankind. Time is divided by the life of this individual. The years prior to his birth we have labeled B.C., and the years following his birth we call it A.D. The space lasted for about 30 years. Not very long for most humans, but more important than all other human lives combined. As readers of the Gospels, we read some of the very early life of this man, his birth in Bethlehem, the family's trip to Egypt to escape the terrible edict by Herod the Great that all children under two were to be killed. And we read about their return to Nazareth after Herod's death. And then we fast forward to the festival of the Passover in Jerusalem when he was 12 years old. The Gospel accounts then skip 18 years or so to his ministry years, which lasted only about three to three and a half years. All of this is included in the space. 
the life that filled the space was full of joy, love, concern, anger, temptations, excitement, teaching, miracles, and every conceivable human emotion. The Gospels give us just a glimpse of this man's life. John tells us about this in his Gospel, chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Yes, the man whose life spans the space is Jesus Christ. John also in his gospel wrote, there are many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the whole world itself could not contain the books that would be written. It was a gospel writer's desire to give what they considered the most important events in Jesus' life when they penned their gospel accounts. The gospels focus on the life of this man who was known to them as the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One. Wouldn't it be wonderful to, if we had a full accounting of Jesus' life here on earth? We could read about all the miracles he performed that were not written down. We could read what he taught his disciples at various points in his ministry. We could read the conversations he had with many people. But this is impossible. Even with the technology we have today, we don't have minute-by-minute minute accounts of anybody's life. In the Gospel lesson for this morning, we have two paragraphs. The first paragraph tells us about the beginning of his ministry when he re we read about Jesus calling his first disciples. These four men, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, became his inner circle. Three of them were with him at his transfiguration later on in his ministry. These men had very likely encountered Jesus prior to him calling them. They may have even heard him speak at some point. In verses 20 and 22, however, we see that these men immediately left what they were doing either mending their fishing nets or sitting or standing in their father's boat and followed him. They knew this man was different than others they had encountered over the years. For who was Jesus, the man whose life included the space, like? First, he was a man of prayer. It was very important to Jesus to have time by himself to pray. He would go to a mountain to pray all night and did so on several occasions. What he prayed is usually not written down. We do have some of his prayers, however, the, the Lord's Prayer that we prayed earlier today and his high priestly prayer, his prayer for himself, his disciples, and for all believers, including us, that he prayed on Gethsemane, recorded in John chapter 17. We know that Jesus was a man of deep prayer. He prayed in the wilderness before he started his ministry. He prayed for Lazarus to be raised from the dead. He prayed all night before selecting the 12 disciples. We can use his example of being a man of prayer in our own lives. We, too, are to be people of prayer. Jesus was also a teacher, preacher, and healer. Verses 23 through 25 of the passage for this morning encapsulate most of what Jesus did here on the earth. In verse 23 we read that Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. There are three aspects of what he did. Teaching, preaching, and healing. Through these three activities, his fame spread throughout all Syria. And great crowds followed him from Galilee in the north, the Decapolis, 
on the east, Jerusalem, Judea, more in the south, and from beyond the Jordan. Jesus traveled throughout the Holy Land, teaching, preaching, and healing. We read that Jesus taught and preached in the synagogues in Nazareth, Capernaum, and many other places. You can see the base of the synagogue of Jesus in Capernaum on the screens. As a Jewish rabbi, he could be called on to interpret scripture during the synagogue's worship services. It was common for rabbis, with permission of course, to speak during these special services. This gave Jesus the opportunity to speak to many of the religious people of his day, since they would regularly go to the synagogue. Of course, we see other times where Jesus gave sermons, which include the next three chapters of the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 5 through 7. We know this as the Sermon on the Mount. It is similar to Luke's Sermon on the Plain. He taught and preached at all times and in many ways throughout his ministry. Jesus also healed many people. He healed a crippled man at the pool of Bethesda in Jerusalem. Many times he would touch people and heal them. It is written that a woman with a discharge for 12 years was healed when she touched the hem of his garment because of her belief, because of her faith. He even healed long distance as in the case of the centurion's child. Because of these miracles, and I'm sure his message, his popularity skyrocketed in the whole region. Whether the area was Jewish or Gentile, the area known as the Decapolis, he was a very popular individual. Matthew records that many people were brought to him for healing. People with all kinds of ailments. These included those with various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, and paralytics. Matthew later records situations in which people were healed of demon possession and paralysis. William Barclay, in his Bible study on Matthew, gives us a clear understanding of Jesus' ministry. He wrote, and I quote, Jesus came preaching that he might defeat ignorance. He came teaching that he might defeat all misunderstandings. He came healing that he might defeat all pain. We too must proclaim our certainties. We too must be ready to explain our faith. We too must turn the ideal into action and into deeds. Of course, any talk about the life of Jesus would not be complete without quoting the Bible in miniature, as Martin Luther called it, in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. That's the ultimate response to this man, Jesus. We are to believe in him, and when we do believe in him, we will be with him for eternity, our ultimate destination. In the Apostles' Creed, we start by saying the words, I believe. We say these words three times in the Apostles' Creed. There are not two more important words that we can say. I believe. But what can we really believe in? Oh, we can believe in the Constitution of the United States. We can believe in states' rights, or we can believe that we are the most important person in the world. We can believe anything we want. None of these are really that important. One of these is definitely not true, of course. But then, what is the most important thing to believe in? I truly believe that with my whole heart that the thing that is the most important to believe in is a triune God. We call it the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That we talk about whenever time we say out loud or read the Apostles' Creed. We will soon be celebrating the Lord's Supper. The sacrament given to us by Jesus Christ on the night prior to his arrest. Let's focus on the space, his prayers, 
and his teaching, preaching, and healing as we joyously celebrate the feast on the table. And when we say the Apostles' Creed after the Lord's Supper, let's again contemplate on the space to ponder what the life of Jesus Christ means to us. And then after the service, let's take these faiths with us as we go through the week, remembering that he prayed, and we are to pray as well, and he taught, preached, and healed. We will have joy, peace, grace, love, and many other wonderful additions to our lives when we focus our lives on the life of the man whose life encompassed these faiths. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for these faiths, for the life of Jesus Christ. For without him coming to earth, we would not be here today. Help us, Lord, to focus on him. In this we pray. Amen. As we come to this time of, the, of celebrating and sharing the Lord's Supper, if you have not picked up your little communion set, please be sure to uh, go to the narthex and pick up one. And I ask you to remain seated as we sing together in remembrance. Jesus has done for us 
by sharing the bread and sharing the cup. I ask you to share it with us. You do not have to be a Presbyterian. You don't have to be a member of this church. But if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you're more than welcome to join us in this wonderful feast. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this special meal. This meal that you first gave to your disciples just prior to your arrest. This meal that has been shared through the early church, through the centuries, by all believers, sharing the bread, and sharing the cup. I pray, Lord, that you'll change these elements, this simple bread and the juice, from a natural to a holy use. We ask you, Lord, to be with us. Send your Holy Spirit. Be among us as we share this special meal. Jesus, as I just mentioned, met with his disciples. It was very important. It was with fervent desire, it says in one translation, that Jesus shared this meal with his disciples. He wants to share it with us as well. And what he did is that he took the bread and lifting it to heaven, he broke it and said, this is my body, broken for you. Whenever you eat this bread, remember me. I ask you to take your cup, your little communion set, and if you uh, just lift up the tab of the top or over the cellophane and peel it back, it will show a small wafer. So I ask you to take this wafer. And as a sign of your personal relationship with Jesus Christ, please take the wafer. This is the body of Christ given for you. After the meal, Jesus took the cup and poured the wine. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant, shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this cup, remember me. This is a remembrance of Jesus' blood shed on the cross for us, for the forgiveness of our sins. For without it, again, we wouldn't be here. We would be lost and have no place to go. But because of what Jesus did on the cross, shedding his blood for us, being the sacrificial lamb, the only lamb necessary, the final sacrifice needed, we have this meal. So I ask you to take your cup. And if you tear it down or fold it down and Gently tear up the foil. I ask you to take the cup as a sign of our community of faith. The belief that we have as a church of brothers and sisters in Christ. Please take the cup. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this special meal special meal that we can share as brothers and sisters in Christ. We ask your Lord to give us strength as we go from this place today. Help us, Lord, to remember you. Remember these faiths, what you have done, what you taught, what you prayed, what you preached, who you healed. And know that through your words, through your actions, through the Holy Spirit, the same things are happening. Give us the strength as we go from this place knowing that you're always with us in all ways. And help us, Lord, to spread that good news to others. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
And now let us stand as we are able and say together the Apostles' Creed. You will notice there is that one space between born of the Virgin Mary and suffered under Pontius Pilate. And then that brief millisecond between that, know that that is Jesus Christ's life here on earth. So let us now start in again with those two very strong and very important words. I believe in the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, so suffered in the conscious silence, and was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and set up on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now sing our final hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. with you as well. And now may God bless you this day and may you go into God's world spreading hope, peace, and blessings to others knowing that God is always with you. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us now sing our traditional closing song, God Be With You.